Dad! Dad? Car. Jenny. him. Hi, sweetie. Thanks for getting back to me so quickly. It's about an old client, a friend from Big Sur, Ed Miller. He claims it's his fault that his daughter and her mother are dead. He was driving when their car went off a cliff, and he tried to kill himself. He's been in the hospital for a week. He can't get out of bed because of uh, vertigo, I think. Oh, and he was dehydrated. Probably because of uh, alcohol. Robert? If you could, I would take care of everything. Travel expenses, hotels, fees. Robert? Whatever you need. I think I remember this Ed Miller. The writer? 
The one it all started with? Claire Miller, I'm Dr. Lomas. Robert Kerrigan asked, Doctor, you have no idea how grateful I am to you for bringing Ed home. It's the least I could do. It's a long drive from L.A. When will you get here? If all goes well, early tomorrow morning. I want to get started with Ed immediately. I'll be waiting for you. A pleasure meeting you, Ed. I'm Dr. Lomas. Doctor in what exactly? Doctor? Bachelor's in psychology from UC Berkeley. Master's in... <clears throat> Systemic and family psychotherapy from the University Why, of Michigan. Why, Robert? And... Why? God. Doctorate in clinical psychology from Stanford. <laughs> Why? Hmm. I'll give you free reign. Over my memories, my trauma, my room, my troubles. You got one hour. One. Sorry to insist, Dr. Leonard. But the patient's dizziness, nausea, anxiety, are triggered by what, exactly? Anything. Even just taking a few steps. About that. Straight to my troubles, huh? With all of those degrees, I'd have expected a little more... psychology? Nobody's wiping my ass, if that's what you mean. I'll take nauseated over nauseous any day. No books, no remote, no tablet, no phone. How does he spend his time? Those slippers are a little far from the bed, aren't they? Very subtle, Doctor. If I had this kind of vertigo and no other choice but to walk, I'd prefer the cold floor, too. The clock is ticking, Doctor. The patient shows no signs of injury to the inner ear. This rules out any physiological causes. 
This could be a case of acrophobia with neurological origins in the recent traumatic episode, as you suggested. What about his daughter and that woman? Do we know anything? On paper, Mr. Miller has no children. As for that woman named Faye, there's nothing. However, with regards to your request to treat him outside of the hospital... He's my patient, Doctor. He's lost. He knows that he'll never recover on his own, but that doesn't keep him from feeling threatened by me. Or is that just his way of asking for help? Should we get started? Tick tock, doctor. Why do you think Robert Kerrigan asked me to see you? Because he's loaded, feels guilty, is simply bored. I thought you were friends. What difference does that make? You say it's your fault that your daughter and her mother died? And you don't want to believe me. <laughs> of course. There aren't any birth records connecting you to a daughter. <sighs> I hadn't acknowledged paternity yet. Everything happened so fast. How do you feel right now? Pretty fucking shitty. Like when some idiot comes and pours salt on your wound. Hmm? If you're only going to give me an hour, it could at least be a fruitful one. Shitty. Why? Why? Because I lost a daughter? Because I killed two people? Because everyone treats me like I'm crazy? Because I pee in a bottle from a Dali painting? Because everything is surreal? Because... Because of you. Does shitty work, or do you want me to keep going? Keep going. Okay. I'll keep going. Shitty, 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 and shitty. Got that? Convince me that this woman Faye exists. What do you want to know? What do you want to tell me? It was about a year ago. I just sat down to work. I'd had writer's block for years. But I remembered something I'd made up in an interview. And here today to talk about how to revive your creativity is Ed Miller, author of Face to the Ground, our book recommendation of the month. Ed, can I call you Ed? Welcome and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Though I wasn't too sure you took bribes. Pretty good caviar, right? <laughs> Just to be clear, you're joking here. Remember, you're on public radio. <laughs> Even better, no one's listening. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Ed, have you ever experienced blank page syndrome? <laughs> Constantly. And uh, how do you deal with it? I do a kind of, I don't know, warm-up? If the mind doesn't want to start, then we have to ask the body to. So I let my eyes search for a starting point. When my eyes find the word, then it's my finger's turn. Oh, 
I let them write whatever they want after that word. The trick is not to think. Let them be free. Really? Hi! Guess who's calling? <laughs> I bet you don't even know how I got your number. The thing is, I'd like to see you again. Oh, I think I lost an earring. If you I'm coming, Samuel! Please! Open the door! It hurts. Ugh. It hurts me just looking at it. Were you trying to get me to faint? Uh, no. I tripped, and... Can you help me? My battery's dead, and there are no other houses nearby. Ugh. I'm no doctor, but that looks really bad. I'm kind of in the middle of something, but let me call you an ambulance. No, don't. I'm between jobs, no insurance, no money. I need to lie down, please. Don't worry, the hospital bill's on me. What? No, I couldn't. What if it's nothing? I need to rest. If you bleed to death, you mop it up. Can I... lean on you? Um... Maybe you should ask before you actually lean on the person? Ow! Oh! Oh, hold on. Slower. Hold on. Um, Not so fast. Don't take this the wrong way, but this would be faster if I carried you. I, I can walk. Just don't go so fast. Uh, ow! Uh, fine. Carry me. 
Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna grab you here, okay? And here. And lift you up. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Can I lean on you? All That's right. okay with me. Here we me. go. All right. Hey, am I that heavy? If you had taken your backpack off... Okay. I'm going to let you go. Hold on, hold on. Let me take my backpack off. Now? You want my back to hurt too? Mine already does. <laughs> All right. May I? You may. Do I? Please do. All right. Oh. Phew. Finally. Thank you. Are you good? Comfortable? Hmm? As comfortable as I can be, I guess. Thanks. Um, what did you say your name was? I didn't say what my name was. Oh. Thanks, Mr. Mysterious. I'm Faye. If you could bring me some ice. <laughs> Hand me your phone and I'll charge it for you. It's no problem, at all. I left my car outside the Force Park entrance. I'll go over there and let you be once the swelling goes down. <sighs> all right? What? You don't cook either, pet. Bring me some ice. Yeah, I can. Wait, wait. Gently. asleep with the ice. So will I.
Come on, get off of there. Come on, move it, move it. You've read the message. You're obviously not going to answer me, right? My friends warned me about you. Fine. Screw the earring. Mr. Mysterious, you there? I'm up here, upstairs. Oh, great. I thought you left. Hey, the ice worked. My ankle looks brand spanking new. Yeah, you heal quickly. Always have. By the way, thanks for the blanket. Oh, it was the least I could do. Didn't want you to freeze to death. Not possible. I never die. <sighs> Besides, I usually warm up fast. <sighs> Have you eaten? I'm hungry. I can order something online. Something? My favorite. It's the local specialty. I ordered it yesterday. And the day before. There might even be leftovers in the fridge. Something left over? Even better! I'll check the fridge. Don't order anything, okay? Someone looks pleased. Am I interrupting a special moment? Huh? Porn? Something left over? Porn. It's something... I'm writing. Mr. Mysterious finally makes a reveal. What do you write? Hopefully not mysteries. That would be too predictable. Honestly, I haven't written in years. Today was an exception. Oh, wow. We'll have to celebrate exceptionally. Consider it my way of saying thank you. Mm. 
Hmm. A toast? Hmm. May I ask where you carried this from? Your kitchen. I was looking for something left over in the cabinets and... Huh. I thought you knew about wine. Are you doubting me? I'm offended. Convince me. Hmm. Full-bodied with a deep ruby hue. Hints of red currant. Mmm. Floral notes. Sweet tannins, thoroughly integrated acidity, persistent aftertaste. Hmm. Red? I'm sold. A toast to you. Anything else you want to know? Ask. You have until I finish my glass. The riskier the question, the bigger the set. What are you doing in Cerro Lake? Guess. I'm looking for someone. Who? I'm not sure yet, to be honest. Hmm. Short sip. I hope this doesn't count too much against me, but, uh, how old are you? <laughs> Twenty-three. Half your age. Ah, uh, do I look that old? I'm not answering that one. Medium sip. All right, you've got one more. Make it count. What are your plans for tonight? It's late. I haven't planned anything in years. Today is no exception. You're stealing my words now, too? Words. Now I get why you're so well-spoken. Wolf, Bierce, Plath, Poe, a host of tragic deaths. Should I be scared? My favorite one's missing. The son of the Black Corsair. Emilio Salgari, right? Mm-hmm. How did he die? Uh, suicide. I should be scared. Hey, look! One who's alive. I'm saved. Do you like Ed Miller? You say it as if you didn't. Mm, it's not that. You know what? Me and that guy have history. Huh. So, what kind of history? The bad kind. Oh. Hmm. Did he hurt you at all? The worst part is he didn't even know it. I was about 13. I was obsessed with this book. Well, the cheapo edition. I heard he was doing a book signing at Rossmore Books. I pretended I was sick to skip school, but my parents didn't buy it. I tried to leave during recess and got caught. 
After school, I ran so fast that one of my heels broke and I twisted my ankle. But I made it. I got in line and waited and waited. And when there were only three people left in front of me, this old guy showed up, his editor, I think. White hair, white suit. You still here? What about the radio interview? And he took him away. The end. I never even saw his face. Getting grounded felt worse than the ankle, but not nearly as bad as the letdown. Anywho, 13 years old. Did you really never see his face? He was looking down at the books the whole time. Plus, people were in the way. And you've never seen a picture of him? Online, in the newspapers? Maybe, but I don't remember. Turn it over. Yes! No! No? Of course! That's why you didn't want to tell me your name. I, I have to see this with my own... Oh! Petronius, what did I tell you, huh? Sorry, your, your uncle. It, it's fine, it's fine. I think he doesn't like me, is all. He doesn't like any girl. He's quite possessive. Oh, so do you get a lot of lady callers? Every day I get a hiker with a different excuse. Messed up ankle, sprained wrist. Take yesterday's. Hepatitis. <gasps> Hepatitis! Why didn't I think of that? So sexy. Anyway... Uh, I'm 23 now. I'll never learn. Do you remember the song that Buster sings at the end of the book? I... wrote it. Did you write the music? It's a novel. You can't hear it. I could. What? What? No. <gasps> no. Sing it. No way. Sing it! No, no. Please sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. Sing it, and I'll write that wrong. I'll sign the hardback edition, picture and all. Itch in me hates all that I am. The bitch in you hates all that you are. But when we are together, hate each other twice as much. That's the reason why. We will never part Which goes to show Is how itchy we are And ever meant To cause you any harm Cause darling You need no help with that But it's so Fucking funny to see how you destroy your life Or in your case to see how I wreck mine What a waste it'd be if we didn't team up Which goes to show just how bitchy we
And then... Um, I don't think I need to go into detail about what happened. And why not? Okay. Um, no. I'd rather not feed your morbid curiosity. But there's something I do want to know. Do you remember the date? I don't even know today's date. Our brain gathers much more information than we think. Look here. No, no, no. You want to hypnotize me? Please. <laughs> I thought Robert would hire a real professional. You can keep your eyes on me, but a little spiral is too much for you? <laughs> So, let's go back to that day. You wrote a novel a while back, but you've been suffering writer's block for years. You look through your office window. Leaves dance in the wind. Birds sing up in the sky. There's a mug in your hands, a warm feeling, a comforting scent. You look at a flock of birds and suddenly, an idea. Your cat interrupts you, begging for food. And when you go feed it, There's someone at the door. I'm coming, Samuel! Please! Open the door! Hi. Uh... Hi? It hurts. If you could... Bring me some ice. <laughs> Hand me your phone and I'll charge it for you. It's no problem at all. I left my car outside the Force Park entrance. I'll go over there and let you be once the swelling goes down. All right? Do you like to drink? Wine. Never on my own. Why? People like me better that way. You mentioned a certain Samuel. He lives a five minute drive away, across the forest with his wife. The one who bakes apple pies?
You call your cat Pat. It's short for Petronius. He'll go missing. How did she do it? I haven't asked her yet. Consider it my way of saying thank you. Hmm. A toast? I just finished my degree. In? Psychology. Ugh. You didn't tell me she was a psychologist. Why? And why are you so put off by that? If it weren't for my aunt, I'd be dead right now. Explain. You bought it at an auction, right? Who had it belong to? The first American flapper, as F. Scott put it. Zelda Fitzgerald? And her husband? I'm sure you know they both ended up in psychiatric treatment. He was an alcoholic. He had died of tuberculosis. She had schizophrenia. And died in a fire at the insane asylum. Got it. Thank you. Is your cell on, Ed? Yes. What's the date on the screen? October 8th. You'd had writer's block for years. How did it feel to write again? Hopeful, scary. Will you keep the idea going? We'll see.
All good? <laughs> As I was saying, you have no idea how sorry I am that this didn't work out. Mm -hmm. I had to give it a try. So you did it. I'm cured. <laughs> I'm not going to cure you. You are. We'll continue this later. Get some rest? The smile of the nurse that tore you from your mother's arms. Your first lover. Sleepless in an unknown house, in an unknown bed, staring at an unknown body. Spiders lining up to dive into your empty mouth. All of your TV sets aching to be turned on again. A roach scratching its belly with the bristles of your toothbrush. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good tickle? And then, you hear? Uh, doctor! How long have you been here? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Who's the poem by? Oh gosh, I like to come up with verses while I work. Oh, so then this is where Ed gets it from. Or from my brother, his father. It runs in the family. Where is his father? Hmm. Where did I put the sauce? Oh, it's right over there. I'll get it. Oh, don't be silly. Eddie loves three bean chili. He used to ask me to make it all the time when he was little. What about his parents? Care to eat lunch with me? I usually eat with Ed upstairs, but it's no big deal if he eats alone for once. Besides, I made enough chili to feed an army. I appreciate it, but my stomach and spicy food don't really get along. I think I might need a little fresh air to take a break and maybe uh, organize some of my notes. You should check out the dock. Plenty of sun at this time of day. I'll make you a sandwich. What do you think about Ed? He's a little stubborn, isn't he? Will he walk soon? It's still too soon to venture a hypothesis. Well, I guess he should just focus on doing his exercises, right? What exercises? Ham, cheese, lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise? Yes, that's perfect. Well, if I was able to help him last time, I'm sure a doctor like you will manage. Help him with what exactly? Vertigo. Vertigo? Oh, let me tell you, Eddie was never afraid of heights as a child. No pirate captain ever is. You see that tree? The one with the deck chair? There used to be a little treehouse in it. 
Ed would spend hours on end up there. My brother built it for him. Then Eddie turned it into his very own pirate ship. It was all he could talk about. Pirate this, pirate that. He was obsessed with pirates ever since I got him a book by Salgari. And with his love of pirates came a love of reading too. And see, that's where the writing began. Mystery solved. I don't mean to pry, but... What are you leaving at? Off you go then, Doctor. Or you might not have time to eat your sandwich. <laughs>